So in the beginning of 2023, this year, I made a video on the channel showing you guys how I was down 20% on a long-term portfolio that I was buying stocks every single week of 2022. As you guys know, the market was pretty ugly in 2022. Major tech stocks, 20, 30, 40% off their highs. A lot of panic around the market. People online saying that the market's tanking. People online saying that buying stocks right now is a terrible idea. But I didn't listen to that. I knew that the long-term game was something I wanted to stick to. I knew that stocks like NVIDIA, stocks like AMD and Tesla, 30, 40, 50% off their highs presented opportunity. And this is why I stuck to the dollar cost averaging model and I continued to purchase these shares for the long-term portfolio. I'm happy to make this video today because that portfolio that was down 20% in the beginning of this year, just five, six months after, which is today, is now up over 50% over $22,000. I wanted to make this video and give you an update on this long-term portfolio, hopefully sharing with you guys and hopefully making some of you believe out there that if you're in your 20s, in your 30s, you have fantastic opportunity. You have time on your side, God willing, that you can purchase shares, you can invest in your long-term, and you can focus on the long-term game. Hopefully, this is a video that can share with you some proof that this works, that dollar cost averaging into high quality stocks is something that can benefit you long term and hopefully bring you some nice returns. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my M1 finance portfolio, which is where I dollar cost average, and we can go ahead and break this down. So guys, here is my M1 portfolio account. As of right now, the account is sitting at $71,749, $22,500 worth of gains year to date, 52% on their portfolio. Now, this account, what I do, every single week, I add $500 to this account. Every single week, about $2,000 a month, I will put into this portfolio and I will purchase shares. I don't care what the market's doing. It could be going straight up. It could be going straight down. I don't care. I stick to a systematic approach in my long-term investing, and that is dollar cost averaging. The dollar cost averaging model says to buy shares at a consistent basis and have time in the market. Rather than trying to time the market, we want to have time in the market. We want to have time invested into these stocks. Over time, the gain should come just looking at the historical performance of the stock market, right? So my whole idea here, my whole thesis here is that the historical performance for how many years the market's been open is that it continuously rises year over year. Of course, there are years that are down. There's multiple years that are down. But overall, over an extended period of time, let's say 20, 30, 40 years, the market has increased and has given returns. So how I view this portfolio is it's do not touch. I do not touch this portfolio. I will never sell the stocks that are in this portfolio. I will never try to manipulate this portfolio. I want to have the least human intervention as possible. I know the more decisions I make, the more things I try to do, trying to be smart about things, trying to manipulate and micromanage certain positions, that is only going to make me probably have less returns. I want to keep this systematic. I want to purchase $500 worth of shares every single week, and I want to let that sit on autopilot until retirement, right? That's my whole game plan here, and I will continue to do this as long as I have that cash flow, which at this point, $500 a week is comfortable for me. Of course, if you want to start something like this, you want to have an amount that you're comfortable putting out every single week, making sure that it does not interfere with other fixed expenses that you may have. You want to make sure that the money you put into this is not something you're going to think about, right? The money that's in this account, I'm not scared to lose 10, 20% of this portfolio. If the market tanks 20%, I lose about $14,000 from this point. I'm okay with that, right? I'm comfortable. You want to make sure to be comfortable and you can't be thinking about this portfolio on every single little market dip that may occur on the market. So this is the year-to-date performance. If I go all, right, the entire performance of the portfolio, that is up 36%, about $11,000. And this is my equity curve since inception, right? I started buying shares on November 3rd of 2021. That is the exact high on the NASDAQ. It's pretty much the week before the exact high in the NASDAQ. And you can see, even though I started to purchase shares at the exact high on the NASDAQ, where the NASDAQ stands right now, which is still about 14, 15% off all time highs, I am up 36%. So it makes you think, right? When the NASDAQ is at all time highs, if it ever does, right? We don't know, but let's say it does. 
If the NASDAQ ever returns to all-time highs, think about how much more this portfolio will be up, the NASDAQ still being down 15% off all-time highs, and my portfolio being up 36%. So if we go down to the individual stocks that I own, we can see that these are some of the major stocks I own, and these are the year-to-date performances on these stocks. NVIDIA being the biggest one, being my baby. I love NVIDIA. In this portfolio alone, I have about 28 shares at $192 per share. This is up 179% this year, up about $7,300. In my SEP IRA, as you guys have seen, I have more shares of NVIDIA, but this is the portfolio that I wanna continue to track here on the YouTube channel. So I have about 27 shares of NVIDIA in this portfolio, up about $7,000 a year to date. Tesla, $3,500 year to date. 82%, AMD, 96%, Netflix, 33%. We can continue to go down, Apple, Google, right? Microsoft, Shopify up 63%, down on AbV, down on Home Depot. Also still down on some of my dividend names, as you guys have seen in the recent market trend. The tech stocks are really that hot sector. The dividend stocks really haven't been returning much, but I still get a nice dividend in the portfolio from those dividend names. Rumble is my little uh, dark horse stock. That's up 60%. Boeing, Caterpillar, and Lululemon. If I go to my dividend names, you can see I own Costco, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, Chevron, Procter Gamble, Cisco, ExxonMobil, and Altria. So if you guys are not too familiar with how M1 Finance works, you pretty much create your own ETF, right? I've created my own ETF here. These are the stocks that, in, that are in them, and these are the target weightings that I have on each stock. So you can see my target weight on NVIDIA is 10%. As of right now, that weight in the ETF is 15.9%. So what M1 Finance is going to do at this point is that it is no longer going to purchase NVIDIA because it is overweight in the portfolio. So if that target percent is lower than the actual percent, it's not going to purchase more shares. Now you can have M1 Finance sell some shares to bring it back down to that target percent. I choose not to do that, but you can create that in M1 to have it sell off some shares to bring that weighting back down. I choose to avoid that. So right now you can see Tesla, the target percent is 13%. Right now we're at 12%. So the next time that M1 Finance goes ahead and purchases shares, which for me is every Monday, it's gonna target Tesla. It's going to try to bring that percentage up to the target percent. Another example right here is Apple. My target is 10%. Right now it's at 8.6. So it's going to continue to purchase Apple. No matter where it is, I have it set to continuously purchase Apple. If we go over to the activity tab, you guys can see this morning is when I actually purchased some shares. And this is what it purchased, right? So today it bought a lot of Apple. It bought Home Depot. And it bought a lot of those dividend stocks. Now the reason today M1 Finance sort of favored those dividend stocks is because those dividend stocks have not been increasing and that target percent is not hitting, right? So it needs to start to purchase more dividend stocks because of the recent returns. So in a way, M1 Finance is buying the dip on the stocks that are not performing and it is leaving alone the stocks that are outperforming like Nvidia in my portfolio. So if I pull up the activity tab here and I just go to trading, I can go just to the trading in the activity tab and you guys can see this is every single week since November of 2021. So I can push this all the way back and you can see the first purchase that I ever made in this account was November 3rd of 2021. And since that day, I have purchased shares every single week until today, which is Tuesday. Obviously, it usually buys on Monday. Sorry, I didn't realize it was Tuesday. But because the market was closed on Monday, it purchased those shares today. So the purpose of this video was to just share with you an update of this M1 Finance portfolio. Share with you that I've continuously bought stocks and this is the result of doing so. While the market was tanking in 2022, while everyone on Twitter was saying you're an idiot for buying shares, now I'm the one up 22,000, up 52% on the portfolio. I'm sure some of you out there did the same. And congratulations to you guys that stuck to the course, understood the long-term game, purchased shares into high quality names, and right now you should be reaping those benefits in your long-term portfolio. The last thing that I wanna point out about M1, which I did forget to mention, is the borrow feature. And this is not at all a sponsored post by M1. I just love this platform and I highly recommend it. 
Right now, I have about $13,000, $13,900 available to borrow against my portfolio. This is something called a portfolio loan. This is a very easy way, a very liquid way to get cash, whether it's for your long-term portfolio, reinvesting that cash, or just taking it out, putting it into my debit account, or just taking it out and using it to, say, purchase a real estate investment. Anything you want. Right now, I could take that 13000 out, put it right into my debit account, take that money out, go buy an investment property. It's extremely liquid. As of right now, that base rate is 6.95%, which is high because of higher interest rates. But the fact that I have that liquidity is great. And if you can continue to grow a portfolio, let's say one day I have a million dollars in this portfolio, I could take, say, 200000 250000 out, Go put that down on a house. Really easy way to get that cash. Not have to go through a mortgage. Not have to go through those hard loops to get equity. I can use my portfolio as a way to gain liquidity using my portfolio as collateral. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this little update on M1 Finance. I have a lot of exciting videos coming with Carmine Rosado. If you guys know who that is, I'm sure you do. I was at his place this weekend in Jersey. We knocked out about three videos. So make sure to stay tuned for those. Press that like button if you want to stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace.